John Chambers, welcome back to India. It's an absolute pleasure to have you back here. It's an honor, and I look forward to our session again in three months. Oh, lovely. We look forward to that as well. You know, you've been very, very bullish on India. Yes. You have been a very strong proponent of India-US business ties. Tell us yes. what makes you so bullish, so confident about yes. the prospects of the Indian economy going forward. Well, you know, what is exciting is I have many weaknesses, which we could talk about another time, but I do a couple of things well. I get market transitions right, and I get people right. Uh, the reason I've been so bullish on India is I always believed India had the potential, mm -hmm. but India very candidly was a slow follower. Mm -hmm. Under Prime Minister Modi's leadership, it's become a fast innovator. Uh, the Prime Minister, and I'm a huge believer in him, and I'm honored to be called the biggest bull on in India, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, financially the, the champion of India on a global basis, or even the ambassador, because I love your country, but I believe in the Prime Minister's vision and strategy. And he's fearless. Mm -hmm. he, he is able to outline hope for people in his vision and strategy. And then he says why this is possible and then even probable. And anytime he really believes it's right for his citizens mm -hmm. and for his country, mm -hmm. he does it. But he also knows how to partner. And his vision of India and the digital India, I completely agree with. And it is a model for the world, very similar to what's done very effectively in France and in Israel, where they are literally transforming their country as well. The second thing is, at this point in time, I've watched three transitions in my career, and they've literally changed the world. The first was around the Internet. It was led by the U.S. President Clinton. I was on stage with him at the White House, scared to death, <laughs> uh, and uh, I was the business representative. Uh -huh. But he outlined a vision for how this would change America forever. 22.5 million jobs in the next eight years, 34% growth in GDP. Real median income went up 24% mm -hmm. last time America had a raise. Then, literally seven years ago, we said it's going to be a digital world, and the world didn't really see it until three years ago. But we outlined how this would transform every company, every country, and if you didn't literally change, you would get left behind. Today, we're talking about something that could be almost as impactful if it plays out the way that I believe that it will. We won't know for several years if the possibilities are as great. But it's a strategic partnership between India and the U.S., unequaled like anything's ever been done mm -hmm. before between any countries. And it's a partnership that is based upon not trade, but economic growth, job creation, innovation, inclusion of the citizens, entrepreneurship, and how you bring together hundreds of businesses from both countries, mm -hmm. government leaders and the citizens, to really move with a speed that's not been done before, and a vision that... Uh, President Trump and Prime Minister Modi outlined mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S. in terms of here's what's possible. And that's what we're literally announcing today, we'll talk about a little right. bit later, mm -hmm. is a business organization-led group that is going to be very inclusive with those same type of missions and goals to say how to business play a key role in enabling this to happen, not in a traditional way, but more a way of the future mm -hmm. that really enhances all of society. Mm -hmm. And much like companies used to focus on profits mm -hmm. is their only objective, any company that focuses on profits only and doesn't focus on corporate social responsibility and attracting the young people who want to change the world, mm -hmm. doesn't have a good future. Mm -hmm. So I'm more excited about India now than I've ever been. And while some people are saying it's at its peak, mm -hmm. I think you haven't seen anything yet. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about you know, some of the things that you've said. Let's sure. unpack some of the themes that you've, you know, okay. that you've touched upon. Uh, very recently in an interview to CNBC, mm -hmm. you had said that uh, perhaps even the U.S. government must take a leaf out of Prime Minister Modi's books in terms mm -hmm. of his audacious style yes. of governance. Do you yes. feel somewhere that what he's trying to do, Prime Minister Modi, just, yes. the, just the fact that he's bringing in a new yes. model of governance yes. could be something that may inspire uh, countries around the world, and it's and it's almost like a you know it's uh, it's 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 almost like a template model that could you know that could be followed by some other countries. I think you worded it very well. If you watch what the prime minister is doing, his vision and strategy, which he does himself, he listens to people, but then he owns it and he drives it through. Uh, it is a model, I think, for digitization of countries, and he's further along than any other country in the world with the largest democracy in the world of 1.3 billion people, and he, he doesn't think about it in silos, like GDP growth, mm -hmm. separate than 1.2 million jobs being created per month, separate than what startups have to do and how you have to accelerate that, separate from the education, separate mm -hmm. from the smart cities, from security, from the environment. He understands how these play together. And he's able to take a very complex vision and bring it down to outcomes that the average person, myself or the person on the street, can understand. And so I think his model is very similar to what you see many of the global leaders aspiring to or moving to. 
France, Macron, mm -hmm. the new leader over there, who's a very good friend, he's outlined for a digital France what could really be done. Israel, which is always the innovation capital of the world, mm -hmm. says here's how we're going to run this country. So I think what you're seeing in India is the future. So you're seeing he's able to communicate uh, you know, even rather esoteric terms like GDP, which may not, which, which, which the common man may not be able to understand, but is able to communicate the message very clearly so that everybody is in sync and as in la largely on the same page. I think he's able to communicate it at a level of simplicity that is very unique. If you watch leaders' responsibilities, business leaders, but I'd also argue government, they've got to have vision and strategy for the organization. They've got to build the leadership team that can implement that uh, strategy. They've got to say, here's the culture I want, inclusive or whatever the key elements are, and then I've got to be able to communicate all the above. To be a leader in today's world, you've got to take complex issues and make it easier for each of us to understand and understand our roles within it. He is an amazing communicator. Mm -hmm. Perhaps his greatest strength, though, is how well he listens. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Because one policy decision which has been dissected, which has yes. almost become a case study around the world, is what he did with you know, doing away with high value notes. Yes. More popularly known as demonetization. Yes. And you know, and it's kind of, you know, you've got like two camps now. You yes. know, one believes that uh, it did not uh, sort of fulfill its desired purpose. Yes. The economy went into a bit of a slump thereafter. And then the other, the other camp believes that, you know, I mean, let's not, let's hold our horses. Let's see, you know, the impact this is going sure. to have four to five years down the line. Yes. Where do you stand, John? Well, what is fascinating to me is that almost every business leader who was looking at investing in India felt India would not move fast enough on key decisions and felt that there was not the impetus over the last several decades to take good intentions but really make it a great place to locate jobs and make the tough decisions. What your prime minister did in a weekend on demonetization was, in my opinion, brilliant. And my parents are both doctors, so I focus not on the emotion, I focus on the data. Mm -hmm. The economy dropped for one month. By the next month, it was back flat. By the month after that, you were growing again. And he understood the impact that digitization and monetization would have on his country, not in this next quarter, but the next one, three, and five years. I admire your prime minister for many reasons, but perhaps because when it's in the best interest of his people and his country, he is fearless. Mm -hmm. He takes the idea of hope. He then takes it to possible, and then he takes it to probable. He did the same thing with the goods and services tax. Mm -hmm. Many people don't understand. Any, any leader who's investing in this country business-wise without a, 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 a goods and services tax implementation, mm -hmm. you can't have manufacturing, you can't have supply chain, you mm -hmm. can't have consistency across the states. He had the courage to do that. And I think, I'm not smart enough to say if it's going to add 1% or 3% mm -hmm. of the GDP growth, but it will over time. The fact that all of a sudden people are saying he's moving fast mm -hmm. and too fast, isn't that a great change? Mm -hmm. And his batting average is extremely good, using an American baseball term. Uh, so he understands the implications that all these decisions come together to make it easier to do business here easier to do a startup here, mm -hmm. easier to export from this country, easier to manufacture. And he's able to take these complex issues and tie them together logically. So I just look at the facts. The facts speak for themselves. You are the envy of the world in GDP growth. Mm -hmm. You're accelerating. You're making the tough decisions. And then you're willing to make leap of faith rather than being comfortable and just continue to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. You're able to think, we're going to think exponentially and think what is really possible. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, we listen to you very carefully, John, because okay. you know you've you know you were the one uh, who bet on China when nobody was betting on China back twenty two years ago. Back in the mid nineteen ninety five to be yes. precise, uh, you bet on France to become the startup capital of Europe, and that's ex exactly how it's uh, you know yes. how it's panned out. And now you're betting on India. So yes. um, you know what are the key two or three uh, key areas that you would look out for? You know as you as you observe the Indian economy, maybe areas that you would want you know the Indian government. Uh, you know, should address next. Okay. And I think it's the right way to word it. I think all of us are impatient. Uh, but when you have the largest democracy in the world with the strengths and weaknesses of the largest democracy, and you're trying to do this for all 1.3 billion people, which your prime minister is, uh, it's like moving not an aircraft carrier, mm -hmm. but all aircraft carriers at one time. It's mm -hmm. hard to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the most important thing is to anticipate where the next opportunities will be and the next challenges. The next opportunity is take digitization of the country to its full capability, and that's probably 2 to 3 percent GDP growth more than what the run rate would be otherwise. Mm -hmm. The next opportunity is to take a good business risk 
on what strategic partnerships between two countries can mean and be the model for how that impacts every citizen in jobs in both countries, a win-win in both countries, and to do that in a way others have not done. And that's what we're attempting to do with this U.S.-India uh, strategic partnership uh, uh, group that we're forming in terms of the direction. I think the areas we need to work on, education. We've got to capture the young people's imagination mm -hmm. at 10 to 14 years of age so they understand that they, they can do a startup. Mm -hmm. they, we're going to, at Cisco, launch a program around global problem solvers, which is really taking the capability to get young people excited about entrepreneurism and, and technology mm -hmm. with action items mm -hmm. and uh, action figures who do superhuman acts. In, mm -hmm. in France, the action figure is a young, blonde-haired guy that focuses on creativity. Mm -hmm. The Indian player is a young lady who focuses on a bird and teamwork. Mm -hmm. And you capture young people at the age of 10 to 14, especially focused on diversity and gender inclusiveness, and all of a sudden they realize, I could do a startup. Right. I could get excited about technology. Mm -hmm. So we have to change the education system so the jobs are ready for where we go. Secondly, there's been good progress on mm -hmm. ease of doing business. We can right. do better. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been good progress on a startup economy, but we can do better. I'd focus on the startups because whether it's the U.S. Right. or France or India, mm -hmm. most of the job creation three, five, and ten mm -hmm. years out will be startups. And IPO is a good measure. That's kind of the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. I'm focusing very heavily personally on startups. Uh, I'm doing that both from a Cisco perspective, from a U.S.-India strategic partnership uh, uh, focus in terms of the forum, and that I'm doing it with my own personal capital because I think I want to see how this really works, and I love coaching startups. They're so much fun to deal with. So how do we make India a startup nation at an even faster pace? So education and startups is where I think perhaps our next two opportunities we ought to focus together uh, with business and government and the citizens working together. You know, many young entrepreneurs would be watching, watching, mm -hmm. uh, you know, watching this interview at this mm -hmm. point in time. So what can, you know, what can they hope for, you know, from John Chambers in his personal capacity? I know sure. Cisco has set up a startup fund, I think yes. it's about $70 million. Yes. Uh, but sure. what, can, what can they expect from John Chambers in his personal capacity? Okay, so I'll, I'll answer your question very directly first, and then I'll tell you about mm -hmm. Cisco, and then I'll tell you mm -hmm. about what I think the businesses mm -hmm. uh, can do as a forum. Uh, in terms of my own interest, I uh, coach startups all the time. Uh, I love coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, less, every time, probably every other time I've been in India, I meet with five to ten of the top startups. I talk about what are the key opportunities and challenges, and when I listen to them, they're the same as Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. I look for companies that have a great CEO, uh, that are in markets that are an inflection point. Mm -hmm. I look for companies that have a differentiated capability. I look for an organization that literally has uh, a good leadership team and good mm -hmm. venture capital behind them. And then I look to kind of coach them. So I probably coach uh, 30 different startups. I probably meet with 30 to 40 meetings of startups per month. And I will be uh, uh, spending time in India, both in terms of coaching, but mm -hmm. also personal investments. So could, could you give us an idea, John? I mean, how much can we expect you to invest in the startup? Uh, well, I think you can India? assume that I'm going to invest a lot of personal time All right. uh, and a lot okay. of personal time at the government level mm -hmm. as well. And then if you want to see something's working, then you want to get on the ground with startups and see how it really goes. So I think mm -hmm. you'll invest you probably see me do one startup, mm -hmm. then probably three to four after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the By US the way, India. Cisco, we are all in on India. Yeah. And so we're investing in startups and venture capital and funds to do it. And this is also what the business groups could do together as well. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, fair enough.